Hello everyone. I'm going to get right in it today working on two techniques before I go to an actual page from Christie's Cutting Garden uh, books. So I'm showing you a wet and wet splatter technique and a contrast detailing technique. And what I'm doing here, honestly, is just sketching out uh, the cactus, the prickly pear and its blooms um, to kind of replicate what I'm going to be doing a full demo of in the coloring, water coloring books in a little bit here. So you just see me kind of sketching, again, a copy of what I will be uh, replicating uh, later on in the books. But I'm doing this to show you these two techniques, which I will be using in the full demo uh, later on. And right now I'm starting with water. I'm using that rosemary brush, the triangular number 10. In my latest videos, I've been using it a lot. I started with water and now I'm adding in a green. Um, it's just a nice fresh green. Don't get hung up on what brand I'm using, although I will tell you. Um, just use what you have that's nice and bright and fun and sheer. And I'm adding that green into the wet areas. I'm not worrying too much about like perfect coverage. I'm just keeping that, that cactus wet and adding color into it. Now here, I added a little bit of Opera Rose, just a bright, bright, bright pink right onto the page it wasn't wet and then with a clean wet brush i added some water next to it to kind of uh, smooth everything out and get that color to move on out throughout i'm adding a little bit of yellow because that cactus area is still it's still wet so you can add color in there i chose yellow um, to give a little dimension now i'm going to let that dry a smidge just a little bit i'm going to go ahead and draw another cactus and again, these are two techniques that I'm going to be use, using in the demo to come here in this video. Um, I'm just sketching these cactus just for the point of, you know, so you can recognize what we'll be painting later on. Um, this is just a really fun, quick sketch technique. I'm not really doing a demo of sketching, but certainly if you have questions about how I sketch, feel free to ask those in the comment section. I am happy to answer. I am using a mechanical pencil, love them so much, gives me a lot more control. I'm going in using my rosemary brush again. I went right in with the color. I wanted it to be a little more bold. Um, and then I started adding water to the color after it was on the page. And see there, I used my little finger swipe to remove some out of the line color. Um, so I'm just filling up that, that petal, that prickly pear petal with green. Again, just a fresh green. In this demo, guys, I am using two different collections of paint. I'm using a core watercolor, which is pronounced like C-O-R-E, like core, but it's spelled Q-O-R. Um, and I'm using the high chroma set and I'm using the earth tone set. I'm also using a Sennelier 18 pan watercolor set. Um, and I'm just pulling colors from both, um, excuse me, from three of the, all three of those sets and using them. In this next step, I'm gonna be using those two dark blue colors that I just swatched out on the right um, to add some detailing. So I will swatch out colors like that just so I'm sure that I'm using the color that I think I'm using. Now, look at what I'm doing here. I'm going back in with just the tip of my rosemary brush the petal of my prickly pear is still very wet from my painting before and I'm just outlining with varying pressure on my brush certain areas of that petal. I'm calling it a petal. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. Paddle maybe, petal, whatever. You know what I mean. So again, going into the wet areas and outlining with the blue. Now you see there, the color didn't spread as much because that area wasn't as wet, but that's okay. So this is called contrast detailing. This isn't a technical name. This is the name that Christy made up. So if you want to tell me the technical name, you certainly can, um, but this is what I'm calling it. So I love, love this technique because look what happens when you just let a little bit of line quality, a little bit of pressure from your brush onto a wet page do its thing. 
look at all that beautiful explosion of color that as I'm painting this pink area is still happening. You can, if you watch it slowly, rewind and just watch what happened when I touched that indigo to the green and how it evolves over, you know, the 20 or 30 seconds later, it's pretty incredible. Now I'm doing the same thing. I added the pink up top here in that bloom and while it's wet, I'm going in with the indigo with the very tip of my brush and I'm letting that blue bleed out into the pink and it creates such instant, believable, dramatic contrast. You get instant dimension and it's such a simple technique. So again, I wet the whole petal of the prickly pear cactus. I put some green in there. You can even just start with green. You don't have to wet it first. And then I went in with the very tip of my brush and the indigo and outlined into the wet color and let it just do its thing. Now I'm going back to the left side here, the wet and wet splatter. This uh, petal is still wet, a little bit wet, and I'm gonna spatter two brushes, guys. Load one brush with a lot of color and a lot of water, and then tap that loaded brush against another that's not loaded with color. Um, now this is messy, and you have to be okay with the fact that you're going to get splatter outside of your painting area. Now what I'm doing is going in with another color and with very light pressure, wet color on my brush, I'm just stroking over that spatter just a little bit and letting it kind of bleed out and do its thing. And that, again, creates another really cool effect. Now, for those of you who can't handle the fact that you've got splatter where it doesn't belong, you could go in and add some more petals, some more little nodules onto these cactus. Now, we're about to start coloring, water coloring, excuse me, in the um, Christie's Cutting Garden book. Um, at, now, remember though, you could add your own sketch, sketching details to the book. So this is a really great lesson for that. Don't feel like you just have to watercolor what's in the book and already drawn for you. So there you have it guys, wet and wet splatter and contrast detailing. So let's move on to actually going into the book. And here is the artwork from the book. This is from Christie's Summer Cutting Garden. There it is. And this time around, I pulled the entire page out, which the books are designed to easily have the, the pages tear out. Just showing you again a little bit of what this, um, this looks like. So you can see uh, the pages and how these covers work and how they're filled with tutorials. Um, I painted some there already. Lots of painting advice, tips on staying creative. There's one of my magnolias. That's my favorite page. All right, so there's the book. There we have it. I have to put my name over the uh, UPC number or else the books get swallowed up in piles of everyone else's books around the studio here. So let's get started with this page today. Some people like to tape down their pages. I'm not as big into that because sometimes I find that the tape actually tears the page when I'm trying to remove it. So just kind of a personal thing. Um, apparently I can't decide which brush I wanna use, but of course I'm gonna go back to my triangular brush. Again, that's the Rosemary Triangular number 10. I am going in, I'm using broad strokes and I'm just adding clean water, clean water. And as I paint today, just think back to the demos that I had been working on in the very beginning of this video and you're gonna see them come alive in this full and final painting. Now I'm just dotting in color, that fresh green again, that is from the Sennelier 18 uh, pan palette. I do have a link to that in the description. You can go right on Amazon and pick that up if you wanted to. Um, adding some more clean water here onto the petals of the cactus. And again, there's no rhyme or reason to this part of it with adding clean water. Just kind of do your thing and get it nice and wet. I'm using a different green. This is more of like an olive green. This is the core watercolor from the Earth Tones set. Um, it's a really pretty green. I'm making sure I don't feel compelled to cover the entire petal with color at this stage. Um, don't, that's the beauty of watercolor. Don't feel like you have to watercolor every final square inch of your page all at the same time. Let it do its thing. That's the biggest piece of advice I can give anyone starting out in watercolor. 
let it do its thing. So when you lay one color down and then you pick up another, you don't have to put them right next to each other. You don't have to put them on super, super heavy. You can just dot some colors here and there, step back, sit back and see what happens. Now the painting that I did just that moment before, that was that contrast detailing, but just in lighter tones. So I'm just going through, working through out all of the different petals, adding more green in areas, adding more intensity, especially where one petal, again, I don't know, petals, petals, I'm gonna say petals, um, and just know what I mean, the green parts of the cactus, okay? Where one petal touches another is a great place to add some darker color, darker tones. It's a great, great place, because that's naturally where two items meet is naturally where you're gonna see shadow. Um, again, just working through clean water, adding touches of color, not feeling compelled to fill in perfectly, perfectly. That's not what watercolor is all about. Clean your brush a lot, guys, or when you add that clean water to your page, it's not gonna be so clean. So make sure you're rinsing your brush a lot and changing your water a lot. I always have a dump bucket, again, a horrible name. I've said it before, but it is what it is. It's a dump bucket next to my painting table where I can dump my water out quick so I don't lose my mojo when I'm painting to have to get up and walk over to the sink. Yes, it's lazy, but hey, I need to stay creative, whatever it takes, right? So keep your water clean. I'm just continuing on here, guys. I'm using a brighter green. I'm, I don't even know what the color is right now. I'm not thinking about that. But again, go back to the descriptions if you want to learn about the specific three palettes that I'm using. Uh, if you want to see more about the actual color names. I'm going to get into the pinks here now. Going back to my Sennelier palette. With some really gorgeous reds and pinks in here. Again, clean wet water on the page and then I'm dotting in some color. Literally, when I say I'm dotting in the color, I'm literally taking the edge of my brush, little point of my brush, and going dot, dot, dot. Little, little touches, little, little freckles of color, and then letting them explode into the wet areas. As you can tell, if you don't know me yet, I am not big into technical terms. I like to make up my own. This is a new palette, guys, I've been using. Um, it is Japanese watercolor. I will have that in uh, my description as well. And it's fluorescent. And it's so amazing. I love it so much. Um, so it's definitely a fun palette to play with. If you order it from Amazon, it will take weeks to come. That's the only sad part. But it is, by all means, a worth the wait. Definitely. And this palette, guys, is great. Um, because it's affordable. I think it was like $12 or $18 or something where Kramer Pigment makes a really amazing um, palette of fluorescence that does have some more colors in it, greens and blues, but it's like 80 bucks. So this is a great one to start with. So I'm just going in with my fluorescence. Um, Artist Loft from Michael's Stores, they have their, I think it's like an 18 set or a 24 or 36. I'm not sure how many, they have a couple different versions, but they've got some great, like almost fluorescent colors in them. If you want something, you know, affordable and fast that you can just go pick up, you know, this weekend, um, Artist Loft, definitely go for it. Um, but a little bit of fluorescent sometimes is just all your painting needs to just boom, come alive. So I am going into the birds now and how adorable are these birds? They're just so, so sweet. Um, same idea, wet the area first with super clean water and then go in with little freckles of color here and there to define certain areas. Remember where the bird touches the cactus, you might wanna add a little darker area to um, mimic shadows. And again, just working my way around. I've been working on some of the blooms here, adding in some pinks and oranges, um, mingling together oranges and pinks and a little bit of yellow so that they really look like the sunlight's hitting them a little bit. Again, I'm loving these little birdies. They're so cute, so cute. Notice I have not changed my brush, not at all during this process yet. Um, not sure if I will. 
Uh, again, I'm a big fan, I say it all the time, of a versatile brush. I love my dagger from Royal and Langnickel. Love, love, love. But I'm also so falling in love with the Rosemary Triangular brush uh, because it allows me just to paint and do my thing without worrying about, oh my gosh, what is this perfect next brush that I need to pick up to make this perfect next brush stroke? And instead of like having these constant numbing conversations in my head, I am more so thinking about the expression and the excitement of that. So um, just keep that in mind, you know, find yourself a brush that you really can get on board with and that can be really versatile for you. Okay, so continuing on, I've just been adding more detail and more intensity to this page. Something to keep in mind, I don't mention it a lot, is to think about using a hair dryer. If you get to a point in your painting, which I actually did, you'll have seen the screen kind of change a little bit and the painting boom was further along. Well, I actually took a break and I let the page dry a bit, um, used a hair dryer to speed up the drying so that I could go back without making a mess. And so if you feel that your painting's getting to that point and you're just making, you feel like I'm making a mess. It's usually because you're trying to do too much when your page is just too wet. So I knew I wanted to go back in like I am now with these smaller details, little hash marks, a little bit more shading, a little bit more of that contrast dealing we, detailing we learned about at the very beginning of this video. But I knew that I couldn't do that if things were super wet. So I stopped what I was doing and I did a little blow drying. So I'm going in with just a mixture from my palette. It's kind of like a muddy olive and I added some shading with the edge of my brush, the kind of the side of my brush so I get a little bit of a broader stroke. And then I also did a little bit of hash marks um, with the very tip of my brush. Now I'm going in for the real wow factor, um, a really dark emerald green. Again, I mixed a kind of an intense green from my Sennelier pa palette with a little bit of whatever was dark in kind of the, the crud creases of my palette. I know, again, that's so technical, but I just made a really rich dark green and I'm going along the edges with the very tip of my triangular brush. Look at that, they're still wet from when I added those first layers of shadows just a few seconds ago. And that is creating the most spectacular, sharp yet rich detailing. And I love that, I love that. And I want you guys to have the confidence to go ahead and, and do that. And I know it can be scary because you could be at a point in your painting where you're really in love with it, but it's all soft and dreamy, but you might be just desiring that extra contrast. Go for it. Flip your page over, do a little practice on the back, grab a scrap sheet of paper, do a little practice, and then you know what? Go for it. So here, going down to this petal at the bottom, and I'm adding a bit more shading with a bright green. And again, look at that contrast detailing like we did in the beginning. Right into the wet areas, I'm adding that rich indigo blue. And boom, look at that explosion. It's subtle but almost not. If you're really watching, it's just like wow in your face. Look at, it's still moving. Look at that, it's still moving. Now at this stage, you can re-wet areas like I just did that bird because I want to add even more intensity but without it being too, too dramatic. So I'm going in to the, the re-wet areas and adding that dark indigo blue. See it exploding into the bird's facial area. I didn't know birds had facial areas. Wow. Sometimes when I hear myself say things, I just crack myself up. Anyway, um, uh, so same technique. That's the contrast detailing. I wet the bird with clean water, and then I added with just the very tip of my brush a little bit of dark, dark indigo. Of course, with a strong orange. Guys, these are the fun details. This is towards the end of your painting. These are the fun details that just, just give that, that finished wow factor. I love it. Adding a little orange into the legs, the claws and his beak. Oh, so, so fun. 
um, using just the tip of the brush. You saw it right. I added just a smidge, smidge of orange into his wing, just like his, his wing is just being kissed by the sun. All right. I'm re-wetting this bloom here, and you can imagine what I'll be doing next. I am using another rosemary brush. This is a dagger brush. Um, it's a synthetic bristle brush. I will list that below in descriptions. I am using kind of a rusty red right now over that um, bud that I just re-wet. And then on top of that, again, you guessed it, the indigo blue. And it doesn't look blue, does it? It's not meant to look blue necessarily. It's meant to just be a rich dark. I was always taught by my watercolor teacher, Sue Hand. I've mentioned her before. And how about that name, right? I say it every time I mention her. The best name for a painter. But she never let me use black watercolor, never. She always wanted me to use dark, dark, dark blues or to just mix up the grunge on my palette, meaning all the paint that collects on the edges that just looks dirty, that when you're a beginning painter, you think you're supposed to wash away. No, keep it there, scoop it up, and it makes the most delicious dark, dark color. Anyway re-wetting this area a little bit. And this is really another technique that's called glazing. When you paint an area, let it fully dry, and then re-wet it to add another layer of color, that's glazing. Um, okay, there we have it. I'm doing a little bit of splatter. Um, so fun, but again, it's you have to be brave, because like I said, you're going to get splatter where you don't want it, it's inevitable going in and smooshing that spat splatter around with um, a little bit of yellow, just to add again a sun-kissed feel. And that is from my fluorescent palette. I will give you more information on that, absolutely. Going in with that brush, the broad edge where I, and if you saw there, I started painting with the broad edge, but then I quickly spun my brush a little bit and went to the thin edge of the brush, which is just comes with time, comes with practice. Uh, but think about your brush that way. Think about how you can spin it in your fingers, in your hand, and how it can do different things for you. Same contrast detailing technique, I went in with a bright green. While that bright green was still wet, I went on top of it with an indigo. Now I'm scooping up some of the wet areas because they're just too much. They just look muddy and just too much. So I'm scooping up the color with a clean dry brush and then off camera I'm blotting it onto a paper towel. Now I'm going in with that same dagger, rosemary dagger brush with just the edge of it, just the tip, and I'm adding some just texture marks Go back to my video on mark making and you will see an exercise for how to make marks for practice to get familiar and um, comfortable with your brush. Um, and that's, that, that will be a great exercise for you. If you haven't watched that one, go ahead and watch it. Clean my brush, adding some of that bright, bright pink. A lot of you know it is Opera Rose, but whatever you have on your palette that looks the brightest pink, use that. Now that bright pink was my wet area, and then I just went in and freckled in some color, little freckles of color. Um, it was an alizarin crimson from the Sennelier set or something similar. Again, guys, have I reminded you that I'm not big on technical terms and the names of the paints? I actually had someone comment recently and they were, I think, just flustered and they wanted me to call out the exact names. And I was like, that's nice, but that's not what I do. I want you to just use what you have and be happy with what you have. So anyway, um, I hope you don't mind. This is me. This is my personality. But if you ever do have a specific question about color, that a color that I'm using, please don't hesitate to ask. I will do my best to remember and give you uh, the answer you're looking for. So just a close up here of what we've been working on, guys. I've had so much fun with this demo. I really would like to see you try it out yourself. Sorry for the pink haze today. I'm wearing a bright pink shirt. I will see you next time.